Good morning again, everyone. Welcome back again to the KSR YouTube channel. Gonna do a little working on this 5.0 Mustang here today with a Holley Terminator X fuel injection system on it. If you like what we're doing on this channel, please go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification bell and like and comment on this video. I try to get to as many of the comments as I can. Can't get to them all because you guys are awesome. You comment, well, there's a whole lot of y'all and there's only one of me. But I try to do my best to keep up with some of the comments and interact with you guys and keep this thing going. But if you've got a Fox body with a 5.0 Terminator X system on it from Holly, you might want to stay tuned for the rest of this video. See you in a second. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna talk about is to have you, or suggest that you get the CAN to USB adapter and use your laptop for doing some of your fine tuning on this vehicle. It's what I do with all of the Holly systems, whether it's the Terminator X, the Snipers, the Dominator based systems, the HP based systems, all of them. I'm going to log into this so that I can get into it with my laptop. What we're going to talk about today are some of the common issues that I see when somebody buys a system from us, brings me the car back for tuning. So they get the system installed and they think there may be a problem with the system or they can't get it to run quite right. So they bring it back to us for us to do some tweaking and moving forward with the car. So one of the first things that I typically see, and it's, I will say that Holly could have done a little bit better job explaining this. It is in the instructions, but we're going to show you guys exactly how to do it today. And that has to do with the idle air control motor or in the system, that will be your IAC. So maybe you guys can see that. Let's lower this down just a smidge. All right. So we're live with the system, but what would happen right now, and a way for you to check to see if your IAC is working, if I crank the car up right now, I know the idle air motor is not working, but I'm gonna show you guys how to test your idle air control motor both before and after we do this. Yeah, so the system comes from a default set up for a GM LSX idle air control motor. Now you might be saying, what the heck, this is a Ford, but I'll tell you why they do that. The GM LSX idle air control motor, sorry Ford guys, it's a better idle air control motor. So that idle air control motor is built into the harness. Well, the wiring for that idle air control motor is built into the harness. And if you buy an adapter from a couple of different companies, you can plug a GM LSX idle air control motor from like a 2000 Camaro with a V8, plug that into this adapter and have really good idle air control function built into your factory, well, the Holly factory harness. Now, if you do it with the Ford idle air control motor, you have, have to actually make some changes in the programming. So I'm gonna crank it up right now, and we'll go through our little test. Hopefully this thing's not so loud that you can't, you can still hear me. I think it's gonna crank up and run here. We'll see. spark off 
now that means we're just running on the timing that's in the table here. You can see our little football moving around. And to test the idle air motor, I'm going to go to idle speed. You can see this whole block is set at 900. So just to see if it works, we're going to change all of these to 1500. Nothing changed. All right, so obviously that didn't work. So we're going to go back, put these back at 900 where they were. Let's see, we'll flatten that peak out right there. Fill row values. All right, so let's go and select the Ford idle air control motor. We're gonna go over here, we're gonna select it as a Ford. It is not a stepper. It's actually a PWM. Frequency of a Ford, I've always had good luck with 300. Don't stab 300 in there. Okay, so once we get these settings right, this stuff's all kind of just the default, so we're gonna leave it. I'm not gonna turn idle air or idle spark back on. I'll show you guys what happens later with that. But now that we have turned this on, you have to go to the pin map. You click outputs, and now IAC PWM has shown up. So the way the, the Holly harness for the five O's is wired, output number four is where you park the idle air. Oh, you know what? I can't do that while I'm online. Silly Kevin. Okay, so we'll go back, outputs, drag this down. Now that we have done that, we're gonna link back with the computer and it's gonna tell us we need to restart. So we'll do that real quick. All right, so now that that's done, we should have some idle air control functions. So what's gonna happen now, depending on where that idle air motor was set a minute ago, it's going to now be open 50%. So what's probably gonna happen is it's gonna idle and rev up a lot higher than it used to. Where the timing is doing here is bouncing around 15 or 16 degrees 
even though the table is actually commanding 20. So that's, that helps keep the timing or keep the engine close to closer to your target idle or your target idle speed. Okay, so another thing we need to check is the base fuel pressure. So if we go back and look at our base, I probably should have done this before I fired it up, but I knew it ran. So I was gonna just check it anyways. So if we look here, this thing has 24 pound injectors in it. And it says the system pressure is 43 PSI. Well, to check that, we need to unplug the vacuum advance, or we need to unplug the vacuum from the regulator and verify what that pressure is with no vacuum on it. So that is down in here on this car. If we go look at our fuel pressure, thirty-five. So we need to make some adjustments there. So we want that to read forty-four, just like the computer thinks we have. selected the correct injector this car actually has a set of Bosch 28 pound injectors so what I did uh, to deal with that I picked the Ford large red because that's a Bosch injector factory and I just changed it to 28 in this window so what we should have now is accurate fuel consumption numbers based off of the duty cycle of the injector the computer knows we've set the fuel pressure right. The computer knows what size injector is in it. You can basically know how much fuel the engine is consuming. And if you know how much fuel the engine is consuming, you kind of know how much horsepower the engine is making. So typically around you know, 14 to one air fuel ratio, if you double the pounds per hour that the fuel is consuming, that's about how much horsepower the engine is making. These are very rough numbers, you know, without knowing the brake specific fuel consumption of the engine and going into a lot of details, like on an engine dyno, it's just a rough number. So you can kind of tell what's going on. Now, if you run the engine richer than say 14 to one air fuel, like where you're gonna be idling, your pounds per hour to horsepower ratio is gonna be less. So say you're using 400 pounds per hour of fuel, well, that might be 800 horsepower if you were running lean and dangerous and it's really 14 to 1 making that much kind of making that kind of power is way too lean so it's going to be less horsepower per pound of fuel at richer air fuel ratios hopefully that makes sense i think it does but right now we're basically bouncing around 6.7 to 7 pounds per hour of fuel so right around 14 horsepower sitting here at idle. And when we know that information, we can also set our starting fuel. So when this engine is fully warmed up, we know that it's going to need seven pounds of fuel to be running. 
I typically like to give it a little bit extra just to start it off. So we're gonna go to startup enrichment and let's see it's showing six. Leave the fuel pump prime on it at 130 percent so like let's make this eight for start up there and i'm going to blend all of these up about five percent so now when we go to crank this thing i'm going to shut it off no pedal and i'm going to see if it cranks hopefully it does all the way off and let's see if she cranks. So it's gone to the idle air park position that I commanded earlier. And the fueling amount should crank pretty easy. Let's see. Maybe it was just a little rich. Looking at the air fuel or the idle air position right now, Maybe we'll bump that up just a little bit so that it, you know, you need fuel, you need a certain amount of fuel and you need a certain amount of air for the engine to crank. So it sounded to me like it was a little bit rich. What I'm going to do, rather than leaning it out, I'm going to give it a little bit more fuel so hopefully it gets a little more consistent of a kickoff when it starts. So once you get done with the other stuff, what we should do, or what you should do, is verify that your timing matches what the computer thinks it is. Now, I don't know if it recorded how much of what just happened, but I plugged in and I checked it. I set the commanded timing to 20, and a by using the enable static check, a static enable static timing check is what I use that function in the menu. Well, the timing was only a six when the computer thought it was a 20. So now I need to go back in and back the idle air screw back off and also go back through and do some other tuning parameters like I did a minute ago. The order of this could probably be better one way or the other. Like as soon as you get it up and running, you go ahead and check the timing to make sure that the timing is what you're commanding in the computer. So that way, when you get your idle air motor set, or your throttle position set to get your idle air motor at you know less than 10 percent you don't end up having to go redo it again a second time part of it with me i just go back and forth again until i get it right all right so now that we've got the idle air control working the fuel pressure set correctly the correct injectors it runs and we've set our timing to match the com what the computer thinks the timing is inside the engine. So now you can actually roll it onto the dyno and uh, start doing some tuning. Usually I do some drivability stuff first. I'll make a couple of wide open throttle pulls or I go a little bit higher, a little bit higher in the RPM, making sure that I'm not running out of injector or it's not making more boost than we want it to. This is a really old Paxton on this thing. And uh, as you can kind of tell from looking at it, that uh, she is very old. And the air inlet temps coming out of that, even at idle, are extremely hot. Like it's sitting here idling with the air inlet temp at 180 degrees, which is a little warm. So I'm a little curious how it's gonna be once I actually get some cruise RPM to it and maybe move some more air through the supercharger. I did play with it for a while, messing with the idle settings and setting the timing and then playing with the tip in rev just a little bit but that's going to do it for this episode a couple of videos from now we'll walk through actually doing some of the power tuning on the thing and uh i'll see you guys in the next one